Uh, welcome to Edinburgh TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please confirm that you're there by using the number on the screen, 21450, with an SMS using that number, and the state where you are writing the message from. Uh, remember, this is your teacher, Catherine Yoroku, Form 2 Biology. We are still continuing with transport in plants. I gave you an assignment where you, have, you were to come up with the differences between the dicotyledonous root with the monocotyledonous root, and I hope that you are able to do so. So there are two main differences that we have. In the dicotyledonous uh, root, the xerem forms a star shape. the center where the phloem alternates so the phloem is found between the arms between the arms of the xerem that is in the dicotyledonous uh, root so what about the monocotyledonous root The xerem alternates with the phloem. And this was clear in the diagrams that we drew. Monocotyledonous root has a pith, while the, the dicotyledonous root, there is no pith. So, those are the two main differences in the two roots. So then to continue with what we were covering in the previous lesson, we were looking at the regions in the root. We looked at the first region where we have the apical stem, the apical stem, and we looked at the characteristics of these cells. The characteristics of the cells in the apical meristem region, where we say that they have dense cytoplasm, they are thin walled, and they have no vacuoles. So, this is what we covered last time. So, to continue with the other region, we have the region of zone, uh, zone of cell elongation zone of cell elongation so this would be our number two because number one is the apical meristem so in the zone of cell elongation just like the name suggests to elongate it means to increase in length So here, the cells that are found in this zone of cell elongation, they have increased in length, so it means that they are longer compared to the cells in the apical meristem. And these cells, after increasing in length, it means that they also increase in size. They increase in size. So this is how you'd tell that these ones are not from the apical meristem because they have increased in length and in size. And these are the ones that now push the root tip uh, through the soil. So they push the root tip through the soil. So the other zone that we had is the zone of cell differentiation. zone of cell differentiation. So in this zone, just like the name suggests, it means that the cells here become different. They are modified to carry out different functions. Note that in the apical meristem, in the zone of cell elongation, the cells look the same. But now here, in the zone of cell differentiation, the cells are modified 
to enable them carry out different functions. So this is the zone where we had the root hairs. So we have the root hairs in this zone. We have the epidermis. We have the cortex. We have the vascular bodies. The vascular bodies. We have also the endodermis. and the pericycle. So these are made up of cells that are modified to be different. They have become different to enable them to carry out different functions. And therefore, we will take each of these and describe them. So we have these that are found in the zone of cell differentiation. So we will take each of these and describe I'll start with the outermost layer, which is the epidermis. But now, since we are dealing with the young root, the outer layer is referred to as the pilifelas. Pilifelas layer. So this is the outer layer in a young root. The peripheral layer is the outer layer in a young root. It is a layer that is made up of a single cell. It's a single cell layer. So what does this mean? Since it is on the outside, I'll just draw a plan diagram. The thickness is a single cell. So this is the peripheral. And remember, I have said that it is found in young roots. As the root becomes older, the peripheral layer is replaced by the epidermal layer or the epidermis. Now this peripheral layer is the one that gives rise to the root, the root hairs. This is one, so it is a root hair. So the peripheral layer, as you can see the way I have drawn, we have these uh, projections or extensions from the cells. They form the root hairs. Now a root hair increases the surface area. for absorption of water and mineral salts. So how do we uh, describe the cells that are found in the peripheral layer? Now these cells are thin walled the cells are thin walled. Why are they thin walled? To allow passage of water. Remember the function of the root is to absorb water and mineral salts. So these cells are thin walled to allow passage of water and mineral salts. And now we also have the root hair cells that are found in the peripheral layer that I have said that they further increase the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. So it means that the root, together with the root hair cells, they absorb a lot of water and mineral salts from the soil. Now these cells, another characteristic of uh, these cells is that as uh, because they are thin walled, it is easier for water to pass through, but they do not last for long. Because I have said that the peripheral layer, as the cell, the root becomes older or mature, 
the piriferous layer is replaced by the epidermal epidermal layer. Now this layer has less permeable, is less permeable to water and mineral salts. Less permeable to water and mineral salts. Uh, which means that compared to the piriferous layer, the piriferous layer will allow water and mineral salts to pass through, but the epidermis does not allow as much water and mineral salts to pass through. And therefore, the function of now absorption will be left to the root hairs, as we shall see later on. Now, the next layer is the cortex. If you look at the diagrams that we drew, we have the cortex. Now the cortex is made up of loosely packed cells. And these are palenchyma cells. Loosely packed cells. They are referred to as palenchyma cells. And it is through these cells that the water and mineral salts move from one cell to the other until they reach the vascular bodies. So this is a layer that is made up of many cells. That is the cortex is a layer that has many cells unlike the peripherals which is a single celled layer. So this one occupies most of the space in the, in the root. Then we have the endodermis. Endodermis, again, if you look at the diagram, it is uh, a small layer because it is a single celled layer. It is continuous, if you remember the transverse section, made up of only a single cell. And the endodermis has a function of controlling the amount of water. It controls the amount of water entering into the xylem. Controls the amount of water entering into the xylem. Now what are the characteristics of the cells in the endodermis? One characteristic is that it has starch grains. So this means that if we use iodine on a section of the root, this section of the endodermis will stain blue-black when we use iodine on it to confirm that it contains starch. The other characteristic is that it has what we call a Casparian strip. There is the Casparian strip. Now this is a strip that is impermeable to water and therefore it ensures that the water moves in through one direction. Remember we have said the function of the endodermis is to control the amount of water entering into the xylem. So the other part that we will look at is the pericycle. It is also a layer that is found in the root. The pericycle. It is also a single a celled layer, just like the epidermis. Now the function of this layer is that it is the one that gives rise to lateral roots. So what does this mean? We know that roots grow downwards. If I draw this we have the root that grows downwards, but we also have other roots that will grow laterally. So these roots are the ones that we are calling lateral roots. 
So where do they arise from? They arise from the pericycle. And the pericycle is just beneath the endodermis. Then we have the vascular bundles. Now the vascular bundles are made of two tissues. We have the xerem tissue, and we have the phloem tissue. Uh, hope you can remember in form one, we covered this. The xerem transports water in mineral salts. while the front tissue transports dissolved food substances. From the leaves to other parts of the plant. So the xerem tissue transports water and mineral salts from the root to the other parts of the plant, while the phloem tissue transports dissolved food substances from the leaves to the other parts of the plant. Uh, the next, we have the root hairs. Now these are extensions that arise from the epidermis or the outer layer of the root. And remember, in the young root, they will arise from the periphelous layer. So the root hair cells, you say that the function is to increase surface area. for absorption of water and mineral salts. So in our next lesson, we'll be able to draw the root hair cell. But for now, we need to remember the function of the root hairs. It is to increase the surface area for absorption of water and mineral salts. So there is an assignment that I want to give you. The assignment for today, number one, name the three regions of growth found in a root. You name the three regions of growth found in a root and the other is uh, you give the characteristics of cells found in the apical meristem. stem. Apical meristem stem region. So give the characteristics of cells found in the apical meristem region. So today we've been able to look at different regions that are found in a root and the characteristics of the cells in this region. So I hope to see you next time. Remember to get fingertips in biology. You can SMS us using the number 21126. We'll appreciate questions from you. So thank you very much and see you next time.